uh, while we're trending maybe in the right direction for the NBA and the NHL, I, I can't say the same for baseball because of uh, all the, oh, I don't know, I guess distrust between the owners and the players and the fact that the players think that the March deal is a solid deal. The owners think the March deal is a, do- a deal that had to be renegotiated depending on what the future held when it came to fans or no fans. Um, you know, there's a smoking gun email in favor of the owners. Um, and that and that is really, you know, that's kind of disappointing right now because it's like uh, Scott Boris is the lead dog right now for the NFL, uh, for the Major League Baseball Players Association. And when I say his name, I think it puts a shiver up the spine of uh, Major League Baseball fans. I think they can't stand the guy. I think that they hate everything about the guy. Uh, however, I will say he's one of the most uh, aggressive, successful agents in the history of team sports. And I guess if I were a Major League Baseball player getting ready to hit free agency, he would be the guy that I would hire because somehow, some way, he would get me the money uh, that I felt like I deserved. So he is kind of leading this charge, I feel like, along with Tony Clark, that is really kind of putting a damper on everything baseball, which is really unfortunate, you know, and because I think most athletes all want to come back and play. I, you know, when you read about the NBA players, you read about the NHL players, you know, they all know that they want to come back. They want to make some money uh, and they want to finish their seasons off and they want to crown a champion. And they also know that if they do come back, that it signals some sort of normalcy, as you just said. As far as the baseball is concerned right now, uh, you know, I don't know what to tell you. I read that March agreement. I saw all of that. And in that agreement, there is clearly a statement that says, this will have to be renegotiated if there are no fans. Essentially, it's right there for everybody to see. And that's well, why the, the Major League co- Baseball Players Association owner basically said that in that email as yeah. well. One of their own wrote an email to the other side saying exactly that. Right, I know. But, but that's why it's so puzzling that players like, of course, Blake Snell and Bryce Harper and some of the active players that we have heard from have all said, oh, we've already negotiated. Like, in their minds, they've already negotiated, and then they're going to get a prorated portion of their salary. And, you know, that's that's not happening under the current set of circumstances, and things are going to have to be readjusted. And I, I as much as, you know, I, I'm on the player's side because they, they don't have a, an infinite time on the field. They, they have a very finite uh, career span in which they can make money. The owners continue to own, and they can own for as long as they want, and their franchise values continue to go up, although this year I would say they're not going to go up, and this year will adversely affect years to come. So Mookie Betts, who was in line for a huge free agent contract next year, most likely will not see the money that he thought he was going to see because of all the lost money already this year. So next year should be impacted as well negatively. So I, I just, you know, I, I just, I just kind of like I'm trying to put myself in the same situation as those players as I was back in 1987 as a player rep, but that was a different story. You know, we weren't going through a pandemic. We were going through trying to change a system and trying to get to free agency, which we finally had gotten to, and finally the money has started to show itself over the last 15 years or so in the NFL. And so that strike and that, that, that work stoppage and everything, in my eyes at least, was worth it. But now you look at this under this circumstance, and I think every fan out there wants baseball back. Every fan out there wants, especially in New York, I mean, with the players that we have on both of our teams, the high expectations that we have for both of our teams, returning Cy Young Award winners, we have all pros, we got all stars, we got you name it, we got it in, in, in our, on our two teams, and we want them back playing baseball. You know, again, I, I, I vacillate back and forth thinking, okay, it's 80-20, they're going to play, it's 50-50, they're not going to play. I mean, like, I don't know what to tell you right now other than uh, the union, for whatever reason, is, is taking this thing to another level and pushing it to the brink. Because eventually, because of all the international players in all of these leagues, th- decisions have got to be made because guys have got to get back into this country. And I, I for, for the life of me, I don't know what the – maybe you can tell me, maybe Jerry can tell me, maybe I'll, I'll probably won't be able to tell me he's worried about dog nipples and things. But I'm just well, – you know, my thing is like – for players that are coming back from, say, hockey players, coming back from Sweden, coming back from Russia, 
when are they coming back, what are they required to go through when they finally do come back, and how long before they can actually get well, on the ice and start practicing and playing and getting ready for a season? I, I think when they're – this is just a guess because, of course, I'm not privy to these conversations, but I think that the guess would be when they decide on exactly when a training camp of some sort is going to start, that's when people who haven't come back already, players who haven't come back already, start to make plans to come back. And when they do, because testing has been such a big part of the conversation about getting these leagues back – that these players are going to have to get tested as soon as possible. They're going to have to go to a team uh, representative, say, I'm back. Do you have the tests? What's going on? And the communication has to be there. That's really the only way to do it is just let everybody know who's involved, where you are, when you're coming back, when you're going to be back in the facility. And someone who hasn't been tested yet and hasn't gotten the results back yet can't be with his teammates. Can until I jump that in happens. for one second, guys? Sure, of course. So Lee Westwood is in the U.K. right now, and he is entered into the two tournaments in June for the PGA Tour. And he said yesterday on the Golf Channel he's out because the rules, the travel rules, uh, have a strict two-week quarantine when you enter this country, right. and then when he goes back, another two-week quarantine in the U.K. So for him, he said to come here and sit around for two weeks and do nothing is not worth it, and then you throw on the two weeks after it. He said it would take six weeks to play two golf tournaments. He's out. So he says two weeks coming into the country immediately. All right. Well, that means if I'm the NHL or the NBA and, I, and I'm getting ready to start up, I, I got to tell my guys, look, guys, you got to get here. You, you have got, you know, it's Thursday, March, um, May 21st right now. And I, I'm assuming, let's say, three weeks on the ice, three weeks on the field, three weeks on the court. Let's say they open camps June between 5th and 10th, and then they restart in July. So that means it is about now time for players to start returning to this country so they can go through their 14-day quarantine when they get here, yep. and then they can get on the ice or the court or the field with their players. But shouldn't testing, though, eliminate some of the 14-day quarantine stuff? I thought that was only because we didn't have enough tests for people, and if you only had symptoms, that was for, like, the public, right? If you didn't have symptoms, don't get a test. You know, Stay away from other people if you've been exposed to it for 14 days. But if these leagues are going to start up, testing has to be a, a huge part of it. So well, it's going to be a that, huge part of it. So, I, so why would you have to sit around yeah, for two I, I don't, weeks? I, I don't know why Lee Westwood said that. I'm just telling you this is a player that is getting ready to go through through exactly what Jerry just described. Yeah, but there, there's no way that you're going to be able to pull any of this off if you're not testing guys all the time. So well, they are going to test. They, they, yeah, they're right. saying they are testing. I'm just telling so all there's no I'm other. Saying. There's no other way around it. So no, it's like, right. okay. But, but still this quarantine thing, as Jerry just said, as Lee Westwood just pointed out, I still think is, is still in place. So if you are, you know, the Rangers have a bunch of guys, you know, that probably left probably went back to, you know, wherever, uh, Sweden, Russia, uh, you name it, anywhere in Europe where, you know, they may have had a second home or where their family lives or whatever, and they're going to have to get back here. Now, I don't know who's back, who's not back, but those are the issues that are confronting, I, at least I know the NHL. I don't necessarily know that the NBA has as many international players because their, their rosters are half the size. But I, I would think that those are all the issues that are going on behind the scenes that we're not seeing. And I, I don't necessarily know that baseball has quite as many. I would think that some of those guys would probably go back to the DR. They would probably go back to, you know, other Latin American countries where they came from. And then you got to figure out how to get back here. You know, it's not hard to jump on a private jet and get back to your, you know, to get back to where you need to get back to. I'm Boomer Esiason. But the question is, is when when are you going to get back and what is it going to be like what you get when you get here and what are the requirements for you to go through in order to join your team? That's to yeah. me, those are huge questions that still have not been answered. I haven't seen those answers anywhere. If I'm a baseball player who's in the Dominican Republic right now, I am not getting on a plane yet because I have no faith that there's going to be some sort of deal worked out until I hear something better. If I'm somebody who is uh, a Latvian like Kristaps Porzingis, and I'm over in Latvia, I'm starting to get ready to come back because it sounds like everything is moving towards a mid-July start down in Orlando. Now, if I'm a hockey player, I've got faith because most of the monetary stuff has already been worked out, as you have detailed before. I'm starting to come back now as well. But with baseball, you got to give me a reason to come back and go through that. And right now, there hasn't been a reason enough 
to be given to players who are out of the country to hu- hustle back and get ready for yeah. a season that may never happen. Yeah, and the other, the other thing that's going to happen now is that the commissioners of both basketball and hockey, Bettman and Silver, are going to push next year's starting dates into December. Mm-hmm. And I think they're going to keep them there. I think this is what they want anyway. I could see the hockey starting somewhere, you know, around December, somewhere between December 5th and December 15th. I would not be surprised if the NBA opened on Christmas Day. Yeah, that'd you know, be fine. That, that would not yeah. be surprised. That would not surprise me at all. Yeah, I mean, let's let's hope. I mean, that's best case scenario. Best case scenario for the NBA is start this season mid July, finish it out, crown a champion, start another season without it being delayed uh, around Christmas time, and then we're back to normal, and right. then fans start to trickle in after that. That's best case scenario. Is but, it but likely? The, I couldn't tell you that. But the the other thing too is like I keep telling you, the NHL I do believe is going to come back with twenty four out of the thirty one teams. If I were on one of those seven teams that had no chance to go play the playoffs, is my mindset thinking that I'm going to go back and play three or four games to try to do what? And if I am going into my free agency year, uh, do I want to risk uh, any sort of injury that could be long-lasting in a situation where I know my team has no chance to get the Stanley Cup? That's why I think they're going to probably do a 24-team type of scenario to try to get it down to 16 and then ultimately start the, the Stanley Cup playoffs, which requires 16 wins to win the, win the Cup. And with them completing 80%, 85% of, his, of their league, I think that's a justification. Now, as far as basketball is concerned, you know, they, they're behind the NHL. You know, they haven't played as many games. Uh, and the question that I would have, you know, are the Knicks coming back to play? Are the Golden State Warriors coming back to play? Let's, you know, Steve Kerr has been talking about this for a month, talking as if his season is over. No, Shaq said it's over. I mean, there are yeah. a lot of people in the NBA that say that part of it is over. And I think the NBA has got to come up with an, uh, an understanding as to which teams to bring back and why to bring them back. And then if for the teams that don't come back, you know, the thing about it in, in the NHL, like I told you, they've all been paid. So they've been paid all the way through the season. Uh, the NHL paid them off and everything else. So the, the teams that don't come back, those players are not going to be upset that they didn't get paid because they already got their money. As far as, as far as the NBA is concerned, I think the NBA players have already taken a 25% hit. And if they only bring back part of the league, does the other part of the league still get paid even though they're not playing? Yeah, I would think so. From a players' association standpoint, they're going to want to make sure that everybody is taken care of. But I, I understand that that could be a problem. But why bring back teams that are mathematically eliminated and throw them into the pot in this particular situation when you don't have to? 